oh, this is 7.3 day two, 7.3 day one you did last week. That was a bit of a long one. <clears throat> this one should be a little bit shorter. And uh, really just two main things to, to get down in terms of these different properties. So one of the things we talked about a little bit earlier was the idea of a central angle. Basically what a central angle means is the angle is created from two different radiuses, radii. So they both extend from basically the center of a circle. So that's why they're called the center angles, central angles. An inscribed angle is means we're inside of the circle still. So if we look at these circles here, we're inside. And the vertex, instead of starting at the center of a circle, the vertex starts here. Okay. Um, it basically is on the circle. And then we have two chords. These could also extend on if we wanted to, but in this case, they're just chords that end on the circle as well. This one starts on the circle. One of them is a chord, one of them is a tangent, but we're still good, all right, in terms of that being an in, considered an inscribed circle. So our properties, one, a couple of properties that we talked about last week, um, the idea that let's say this is a 45 degree angle, that means this arc takes up 45 degrees of the 360 degrees that it would take all the way around the circle. When we're dealing with inscribed circles or inscribed angles, if this angle here, let's say a little tighter is 30 degrees, then that arc that it creates, this angle is one half of the arc. So if this is 30 degrees, this arc would take up 60 degrees worth of the entire circle, which we know would be 360 degrees. So those are a couple of properties from last week. So this, <clears throat> or these two properties deal again with interior angles. So these are both considered interior angles because they're both inside of the circle or on the circle. All right, so cer certainly this one is called an interior angle as well. So if we look, we have interior angles, not central angles. So what we basically have happening are two chords are intersecting. So here's this chord, here's this chord. They are creating four different angles. So you have angle one, angle two, angle three, and then we have angle four. So we have those four different angles. So our property for this um, is that, go back to black. If I did angle one, gee, one more time, angle one, notice how, for this angle one here and angle three, these are what we call vertical angles. We talked about that before we left. Angle one would have to be congruent to angle three because they are what we call vertical angles. There are two angles that are across from each other <clears throat> that were created by the same two line segments. Those two angles, I'm gonna talk about angle number one right now. So we'll call this property number one. We kind of know that already. So our new property with these interior angles is angle one is going to equal, the measure of angle one anyway, is going to equal, let me sketch in some things. Notice how angle one creates this arc, <clears throat> that's this guy, and then look at its vertical angle. Here's angle three, and angle three creates this arc. So let's throw this down as A to B. Let's call this uh, Y and then Z. We can find the measure of angle one and ultimately the measure of angle three because they're vertical and we know they're gonna be the same. But angle one's measure is going to be one half of arc A, B. So that's this arc here plus the measure of arc Y, Z. And that is this arc here. So angle one, angle three, these vertical angles create these two arcs. We add them up. Whatever that sum is, you divide by two. So this is us adding them, cut that in half. That has to be the degree measure of one and then three. Okay. And it's the same thing for angle two. If I can try to do this in a different color, angle two and angle four create these angles or these arcs. So if we add up those arcs, divide by two, that would give us the degree measure of two and four. <clears throat> That's one of the new things today. The only other new thing is this exterior angle idea. 
if we now look, here's our angle that we are creating. Here's an angle that we are creating. And then if I can move it up just a little bit, this angle down here we are creating. Exterior means outside. So we are outside of our circle. If we just look at this, that should be pretty evident that this vertex that creates the angle and all three of them are clearly outside of the circle. So if I want you to figure out what these angles are, which is ultimately what we want to be able to do. So let's say this is angle one. Notice how these two lines here, these we would call secant lines because they cross through the circle twice. They create an arc here on the far side and they create an arc here on the near side. Same here, this angle creates an arc on the near side and then it creates this arc over here on the far side. Same with this one, uh, this one here, here's the arc on the far side and then here is the arc on the inside. Okay, so similar to the one that we just talked about here, we can now find, so let's call, call these measure of angle one since they're all different shapes, we call them the same number, so angle one, angle one, and all three of these, so this is our property, we'll call this number three of the day, the measure of angle one, you're also going to deal with the one half just like we would have talked about over here, but what we're going to be doing is taking, let's call this A and B, so that's arc AB, whatever that measurement is, we are now subtracting, let's call this C and D, arc C and D. So we take the two arcs here, the big one minus the little one. We're going to subtract those, that's what we're doing over here. And then whatever that gives us, you're going to multiply by half. So very, very similar, where you're going to have a half, you're going to have a half for both of them. One of them you're adding here, that's if we have interior angles. The other one we are subtracting, and that's if we have exterior angles. All right. Usually this is not too bad. Go through a few of these. Shouldn't have to do too many. That's why this video will be a little bit shorter. <clears throat> Number nine, it says, given arc di, so this is our arc symbol on top of the di, is 80 degrees. So we're told that this arc is 80 degrees. That's a degree symbol. There we go. Yeah. Let me try that again. This is 80. I'm not even going to try the degree symbol. So that's 80 degrees. And then TE is 20 degrees. And then they want you to find the measure of angle 1. So the measure of angle 1 and then its vertical angle create these two arcs. So since those are the arcs that are being created by those, we could say the measure of angle 1 is 1 half of those two arcs that the cores are creating added together. 80 plus 20 is 100. If we cut that in half, then we know angle 1 would have to be 50 degrees. <clears throat> that would also then mean, as eventually we would add this, let me get rid of those. If we know this is 50, we know this is 50. And then if we review some really old stuff, this is a linear pair. Linear pair we know is 180 degrees. So if this is 50, this has to be 130. If this is the vertical angle, it has to be 130. It's also a vertical pair. All right, so we can start making some connections to some old stuff. All right, 10. This is an exterior angle here. That's what we want to figure out. What is the measure of this angle here? So the measure of angle T would have to equal, we know there's going to be a half here, but for an exterior angle, we look at the arcs that we're creating. So we create that far side arc. Here is our near side arc. You are told the measure of arc WR is 130. So this is 130 degrees AE. Uh-oh. Now that I look at this, I didn't give you that. So let's add this now. Measure of arc AE, oh gosh, I don't even know what I wanted. We'll go 40 degrees. So if we know this is 40, then what we now do for exterior angles is we subtract those. So measure of angle T is 1 half of 130 minus 40, which is 90. 
So the measure of angle T would have to be 45 degrees. All right. Those are our two properties. <clears throat> All right, 11. <clears throat> You're looking for the measure of arc MH. So this is the answer to the question. Let me do that in a color I'm not going to use. Get rid of that. So here's what we're trying to find. Measure of arc MH. Okay, that's the answer to the question. <clears throat> you were told, um, given that, this guy's here, the measure of angle R, T, E. So here's R to T, T, E is 150 degrees, which then also make, uh, let's not do that yet, because that's not true. All right, so that's 150 degrees. Then it tells you that the measure of arc R, E is 130. So this arc from R to E, and notice there's only two letters here. That's how we know we're gonna take the short direction versus this long direction from R to E. If we go the long way, we need three variables. So R, E is 130. <clears throat> what we have here is an interior angle created by this guy and then this guy. And what we know is angle T here, that you can't see, it's underneath my 150. Angle T would have to equal one half of its intercepted arcs added together. <clears throat> All right, that's what we know angle T would have to equal. So think about the variables that we know. We know the measure of angle T here. All right, that's what you were given, R, T, E, this angle right here, we know is 150. So we are going to erase this and write in what we know the measure of angle R, T, E to equal, that's 150 degrees. <clears throat> we know we have to add their intercepted arcs, that would be the 130. The other intercepted arc, if we look here, would be the arc that we are looking for. So we are gonna call that our X. That's what we are trying to find. If we look at this, you now have what is hopefully a pretty simple little equation here. <clears throat> I'm going to multiply both sides by a one half, or just multiply both sides by two, sorry. So if I do times two, this would cancel. Multiply this by two. So we get 300 is equal to 130 plus X. Subtract that 130 over. And then X would have to equal 170 degrees. And X is what we were trying to find. So that's 170, okay? 12, we did an interior angle in 11. We're doing an exterior angle in number 12. You are told the measure of arc O, S, N. Notice how there's three variables here. That's tell us we want the big arc from zero to N. So here is O. We're gonna go around to S. Then we're gonna continue on our way to N. And then you are told that this is 220 degrees. <clears throat> we wanna find angle C. So here is angle C. That's what we are trying to find. And what we know is angle C, uh, we're gonna write this, we know angle measure of angle C should equal one half of the intercepted arcs subtracted from each other. And it's always the far side minus the near side, which ultimately would be the big angle or big arc minus the small arc. So here's angle C, we are creating two different arcs. Okay, the one in black and the one in red. So we wanna do the one in black, since that's the bigger one, the far one, that goes in first, minus the one in red, we don't know that one, so that's going to be our X, that's what we are trying to find. <clears throat> Check that, I'm tricking myself here, I'm getting a little too tricky for myself. We know what this angle is, all right, and we should anyway. Um, with this type of an exterior angle, this is a pretty unique property. If we look at this big arc, and then in combination with the red arc, you should see that makes up the entire circle. 
All right, also let me get rid of this x because this is not what we're trying to find. We know what the red arc is. The whole circle we know is 360 degrees. The black arc is 220 degrees. So we know this guy has to be 140 degrees. Here's our x. That's what we're trying to find. All right, is the measure of angle C. We can then come up here. 220 was the big angle. We have that. And then we have to subtract away the smaller angle, which was the red arc, or I keep saying arc, or angles for the arcs. But our smaller arc was 140. So we can now go ahead and say the measure of angle C is 1 half of 80. So the measure of angle C is 40 degrees. Okay. So these are nice just because we know these together make up 360. So if I just give you one of them, then we can do a difference with 360 to figure out what the other side would have to be. And then we can go ahead and do our little formula. Thirteen, similar. <clears throat> we are looking for this arc right here. Notice how you were told that our measure of angle R is 52 degrees. So we know that's our 52 degrees. You are then given the little arc. So I'll do that in red. So this little arc, the measure of arc IL here is 23 degrees. And you are looking for the measure of angle or of arc CE. So here is arc CE. That's what we are trying to find. So our formula for an exterior angle, the circles outside, the measure of angle R should equal one half of the difference between our big arc and our little arc. Let's assign what these values are. The measure of angle R, let me write this out, so the big arc and the small arc, or the far arc and the near one. So the measure of angle R we know, that's 52 degrees. Then you're going to have your one half. The big arc we don't know, that's what we are trying to find, so that's our x. The small arc we do know, here's our small arc, that those two line segments connect, those two secants, and we know that is 23. You then have your equation, we go through solve this for x. Same process as that other one above, multiply the left hand side by 2, so these will cancel, so we'd have to multiply that side by 2. So 104 equals x minus 23. Add 23 to both sides. Create a little more room here. If we then do plus 23, plus 23. There we go. Oops. Here we go again. Uh, 104 plus 23. We should get x to equal 127 degrees. Then our last one, I'm going to ask you to put a few things together here. <clears throat> what we have here is an exterior angle. We should know that that angle should be one half of its intercepted arcs created by these two here. This tangent line and our secant line creates two arcs. This one here. And then this one here. Oops, that didn't show up. Get red. So that one. We should know that 60 degrees has to be one half of the difference between the two red arcs. So we can set that up. 60 degrees must be one half of 155 minus x. Multiply both sides by 2, so this would become times 2 would cancel. This side by 2 is a 120, equals 155 minus x. Subtract 155 from both sides. Negative 35 equals a negative x, so x equals a positive 35. Yeah, it's kind of ugly, this should just be a negative x. Multiply both sides by negative 1, we have x equal 35. So that's this. We've got that. And then now this is an old one. 
or no, this is what we're doing today. Um, this is what we would call <coughs> um, our inscribed angles from the other day. And what that was is angle Y here should be one half of this arc. So if we can figure out what is this arc, since this is our interior or our inscribed angle here, should be one half of that angle or of that arc. So we can figure out what that arc is. Y has to be one half of that. And that we should be able to do pretty easily. We know in a full circle we have 360 degrees. So if you look at the two reds combined now, so if we just go all these reds together, the reds make up, if we added them together, 150 plus 35 is 190 degrees. So, oops, so, so if I just subtract 190 degrees... Sorry about that. Whatever's left over has to be the arc that we need in order to figure out what Y is. So if we went ahead and subtract that, we would find that that is what? 170 degrees. So now we know this arc is 170. And then from the last week when we did these inscribed angles, we know that the angle that we are looking for is half of 170. So take 170 we want one half of that. That should be 85 degrees. So angle Y would be 85 degrees. Okay, so really just two things. Where are we at here? Just keep these two things straight. If they're interior angles, then you're adding up the arcs dividing by two. If it is an exterior angle, you're taking the arcs that those two secant lines create, and we are adding those up, dividing by one half. I'm sorry, we're subtracting those, dividing by one half. So we're adding in one, subtracting the other, both of them we divide by two. All right, so that, we'll let you go. Um, hope everybody's well, and have a good day.